This week on Maker Update, electrifying your kayak, robots with a steering problem, animatronic catnap, and 3D printing ceramic molds. Hey, I'm Donald Bell, and welcome back to Maker Update, a show where we take a weekly look at new things makers are making. I hope you're doing well. Happy Pi Day. Let's get started with the project of the week. On Instructables, Braden Sunwald has a guide on how he made his own motorized electric kayak. Boat projects can be intimidating for most of us. It's hard enough to keep your vessel from sinking, but adding in expensive electronics and batteries just seems like a recipe for disaster. In this case though, Braden is using an off-the-shelf inflatable kayak, so we're starting from a solid foundation. The kayak also includes a place to mount a removable fin, and this is critical because he's essentially creating his own custom 3D printed replacement fin with a motor built in. For the motor, he's using a compact brushless DC motor. It's a fully waterproof e-foil motor that runs just under $100 and is able to produce around 11 pounds of thrust. From there on out though, everything is protected in a Pelican type box, the speed controller, the battery, and an anti-spark switch just to make powering the system on and off a little safer. For the battery, he's using a powerful and compact rechargeable lithium iron phosphate battery. For the speed controller, he has a VESC type board that can be tuned using software. This way, he can dial in the efficiency of the motor to maximize battery life and range, and also adjust the acceleration curves to iron out any unwanted power spikes. It's a fun project, and it sounds like it's just the first phase towards a design where paddle sensors, GPS, and an onboard Raspberry Pi all contribute towards managing the steering and the speed. More projects? On Adafruit, a guide from Brent Rubel and the Ruiz brothers on making this face tracking robot head. All you really need for this one is the Adafruit Memento board, which has a built in camera, and a connected servo for it to spin on. With the included code walkthrough, you can see exactly how the face detection is being implemented here. Essentially, it's constantly scanning for faces, boxing them in the video output, and then steering the servo toward the detected face. It's a cool trick, especially for animatronics and cosplay props where you want to add a dash of convincing robot autonomy. But whatever you do, let's keep this technology away from Jamie and Jay at Wicked Makers. The last thing we need is for animatronics like these to track our faces. This is the catnap character from the game Poppy Playtime, and in typical Wicked Makers fashion, they're going big with the design. The structure is mostly made from PVC pipe with some custom 3D printed connectors that act as adjustable hinges. A compact wiper motor is set into the back to create this constant, subtle arching movement. The head has a bunch going on, including light up LED eyes, a compact fog machine, and a servo joint in the neck so that it can scan back and forth. One new tool that they're putting to use here is the free servo animation software Botango, by creating and perfecting the head tilt movements in software and then loading the finished results to an Arduino, you get a really professional looking result. Now for some tips and tools on Instructables, Ali from Cats Creates has a fantastic guide on how to create beautiful, complex ceramic art by pressing slabs of clay into cleverly designed 3D printed molds. Not only is it a super cool and relatively easy technique, but the documentation and video here are really well done. It's no shock that this Instructable took the grand prize in a recent contest, so congrats to Ali. By way of Adafruit's 3D Thursdays, I learned about this Easter egg box design by 3D Tech Designs. This is a hinge design with a unique geared latch mechanism and the whole thing prints in place in one shot. You can find the file on Cults 3D. You have to pay a few bucks for it, but it seems entirely justifiable for the engineering that went into this. On Makezine, they've posted a roundup of cosplay creator tips from makers like Jen Schachter, Tris Rex, Beverly Downen, and more. Not only do they all share some helpful tips, they also each share one of their favorite cosplay communities to draw inspiration from. So it's a great resource for anyone looking for a way into the cosplay universe. And over on Tested, Adam Savage shares some tips and tool recommendations for small shops. 
There's a great chunk in here about getting the right workbench for your needs and where you can source a heavy duty butcher block workbench surface if that's what you're looking for. For this week's DigiKey Spotlight, be sure to check out the latest episode of The Bite Sized Engineer. In this episode, Zach shows how he made his own solar eclipse data logger. In the US, we have an exciting total solar eclipse coming up in April. And the only thing better than safely witnessing it in person is to do some science and collect some data while you're at it. Zach's project is using an Adafruit ESP32 feather board and an attached Ada logger board to collect and store the data. Check out the video link in the description to see how it all works. All right, and that does it for this week's show. Be sure to subscribe, leave a thumbs up, leave a comment. Big thanks to DigiKey for making this show possible. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon.